Hello everyone. I didn't make any videos for a long time, so I've been quite busy. I've been busy building this uh, oil processing steel. Now I'm processing some really dirty leftovers. It's a mix of different types of oil from mostly from the diesel car. I don't know, it's just terribly awful one. So the production is not that fast as I want it and I keep the temperature at about it's set at 415. I personally prefer to process oils at 410. It's not that fast but it really gives really clear good result. Now here you can see the distillation actual output you can increase it by increasing the temperature and probably uh, processing different type of oil but anyway I just needed to test this unit now the unit itself is 6 kilowatts oil steel I've got slight leakage from under the nut I had some leakage now I just tighten it properly just a few drops on the concrete here we've got some leftovers coming out a bit more than I wanted but the quality of the oil determines the amount of the waste you're gonna have so this one is just absolutely terrible one the one that I wouldn't recommend to process at all so it's technically from the old dead diesel engine sump oil this particular one, this valve, is for flow control. So you're adjusting the flow the way that your actual production is approximately 80% and your waste is about 20%. So this type of ratio and your controller keeps you, keep, uh, helps to keep you the temperature at some desired value. So in this case it's 415. I probably gonna increase a little bit. But anyway, so another thing I wanted to show. This is the head. And head actually connected through this line, this particular line, through this line. And this cylinder, it's my vacuum cylinder that I usually use for some vacuum filtration. But I removed the uh, air release well from the top and I installed the tube that goes down to the bottom. It's called down to the bottom. So, and the vacuum is getting sacked. Gas is getting sacked from the very top of the cylinder. So, all the condensation, all the condensate actually settles at the bottom. And we've got dry line going down through this filter. And again, this filter that I usually use for some uh, fuel filtration. And again, it's filled up with silica gel. Silica gel is a moisture absorber and some uh, vapor absorber. And clean gas goes into this um, compressor. So the compressor creates the vacuum within the system. So why I do it? I do it to, uh, to evacuate the stinky gases away and I burn them in the furnace. So you can evacuate them 20 meters away if you would like to, 100 meters away if your line would allow you. So there's no awful smell around your steel. Now, back to the production. Back to the production. So. This is the type of oil. It looks okay, but uh, a bit murky. It will be, because it's uh, distilled oil. Quite fine, I'm gonna process it later with some uh, silica gel. Settle it down for a while and use it in my diesel car. Now, here's an actual production. Not bad. I will increase the temperature. So uh, hopefully after that, uh, after the temperature increase, I will get some flow increase, the production. 
speed will be increased. Now, this is what I wanted to show you. Now, okay, and it's quite tricky. Come on. Yep. Of course, it smells. It stinks. But, for example, if you'll process some um, red diesel, the production speed is going to be much higher. Much high, about 25 liters per hour, I would say, 20 liters easily. Uh, if you will process, if someone would process um, automatic transmission fluid, and again, production speed and the quality of the output will be much better because the temperature of distillation uh, would be much lower. Now, this one. What I do, I just collecting whatever liquid, light fraction, getting separated from the, let's guess right now, but it's already some fractions dribbling. Once this overflow tube is filled up, there won't be any gases running into that bottle. Or something like that. Now I'm gonna try to increase the flow. Oh, no, not the flow. I'll try to increase the temperature by five degrees, and we'll see the flow, the production speed. Now I run it at uh, 420. It's set at 420, but now it's at 417 because uh, the solid state relays they switching on and off, and uh, there's a some what is called inertia and because the oil that's supplied is cooler it's hot but it's cooler because there's a preheater but it's cooler it uh, has some tendency to go down and then it uh, goes up again so it fluctuates within few degrees all the time now here we got here we got production the production did increase but also we increase the amount of gases coming out. So this is why I don't like processing really bad, heavy, dirty oil. And I don't like high temperature. Yes, you can increase the production, but you will sacrifice the quality. So just in first instance, try to avoid to process really bad oils. When I'm talking about used or waste engine oil, I mean the oil that yesterday been good enough for your engine or somebody else's engine of his beloved car, you know. And one day the person, whatever person, decides to replace the oil, drain the sump. Yesterday it's been within the engine, good enough for an expensive engine. Today it's just a waste oil. And not uh, in case not to waste it, there's always chance to process it. This is what I mean when I'm talking about the waste oil, waste motor oil, waste automotive oil. Now, it's a steel. Here's some waste. I will try to increase temperature, increase temperature a little bit more. Try to shift the amount of production towards the production rather than towards the waste but uh, I don't think I would be able to squeeze anything out of this particular oil because because this oil is just it's awful it contains a lot of bad stuff
Let's light fraction. Now I'm running at 430 degrees, I increase the temperature and uh, of course the flow been increased. The oil is not really good, you see it's just burning. So this is a dilemma, either you producing a lot and faster and losing some to the, uh, to the gas so if you've got a way to collect this particular gas and here's a conversion right now you can see the amount of waste you got and we have considerably increased the production as you can see it's a way but it's not a smoke it's really heavy not stinky usually this happens when quality of the oil is not really good to process so it creates a lot of vapor and a lot of smoke as well this one is not smoke it just sits in the glass you see And if you leave it, it will settle and disappear, just become a few. And it's not hot, it's cold. And probably longer metal line if you'll run it into your container, will do the trick and condense everything so distillation is about to end the drum is empty now I finished the distillation and uh, just remove all the leads it's not connected just a controller still running and showing the actual temperature now we've got 369 degrees within the reactor with some remains of the oil inside it's still still dribbling a little bit and there's some gases are still produced so it's gassing and gases are burning you see Now I'm waiting for the stuff and the steel is going. I'm waiting for the steel to cool down completely, then I will disassemble it. Later I will check the light fraction in this cylinder, the amount we've got. Um, from this particular one, I've got kerosene like substance approximately 150 milliliters and I processed approximately I would say 18 liters maybe about 20 liters but it takes I would say about 
seven liters to prime the unit. So here's the stuff we've got. It's not really clear. And it's more like a kerosene. You can see the spot. I just tried to ignite it. It's sort of been igniting, but it's drying out. So it's a dry substance. Now I will try to soak this metal mesh scorer and try to ignite it and we'll see how it's burning. Is a heavy fraction. It's oily one. Ah. So this one is more like a kerosene. You see. Uh, more like a diesel, so it's impossible to ignite. It's not a petroleum one, not a petrol. So it's a proper diesel fraction. 